about a year ago, I discovered that by constructing a very special radio antenna, you're able to capture signals from passing weather satellites that transmit pictures of the Earth in a very specific format. And by using a software-defined radio, you're able to capture these images. To test this out, I just went to the hardware store and bought some wood and constructed in one night a really bad-looking antenna that did actually work and got me really cool looking images but there were a few downsides with it. So first of all it was wooden that means that it's over time it would rot. It was also very fragile so like the metal elements that actually collect the radio signals if you that was just made out of like a really thin garden wire and it was kept on a wooden stand I had to keep indoors every time I needed to use it I'd have to take it outside I'd have to unfold it because it was on a hinge and it was just a bit of a pain so I want to construct a new antenna which is more permanent and that can last a lot longer and that will get a much better signal so for example it will be made out of metal probably aluminum it will be fixed to the house as well we've got an antenna outside that we don't use anymore so I thought about replacing that old antenna with this new current one and then running the wire through the roof. If you'd like to know more about the actual process of decoding and demodulating the image I've put some links in the video description um, from other channels which go into a lot of depth about what the kind of tools you'll need and the software. Here is my rough plan and excuse what I've already got written on there but basically uh, what I have is the two conduits uh, I'll be using aluminum and they will be crossing over and I'll somehow attach them maybe I'll put bolts through the middle there or I'll put like 90 degree brackets I don't know I'll figure it out later but at the bottom it somehow has to be mounted to a pole so there's got to be some sort of mounting thing at the bottom um, the ends are the important part because at the ends I'm going to have these little caps that go on the end and then they're going to have the pieces of metal that are just sticking out like that. And those pieces of metal will have two bolts in them each and then the coax wire so you'll have the wire um, so this is like the outside shield of the coax and then you've got the actual internal coax. So the outside shield that'll be connected to one um, of the uh, metal uh, aluminum pieces and then the middle one will be connected to the other one and I can't remember if it's the inner ones the bottom or the top I'll look it up later look where we are Woo. all right so I've got all the parts I need I've got the two uh, aluminum extrusions and then I've got the one one meter piece of the aluminum rod and then the gigantic three meter long one and I'll just cut those into sections. I've also got over here some bolts, some hose clamps and some of these caps. Slight problem getting the aluminum rod in. Had to take the back seat down and shove it into the boot but it fits. So what I did is I took that big aluminum piece and I cut it into segments of half a meter. So each one of these is a half a meter and what I'm doing is with the rough ends, I've got a bench vise here and I'm taking the end of the pipe and the la the end centimetre or two I'm sticking in the bench vise and just squeezing it. Then, with the I've got these little end caps for the end of the aluminum uh, square tubing is I'm drilling some holes in the end cap and I'm sticking two screws with the um, flat piece of the tube through them. Here I've got the pipe stuck in the vise about a centimetre and a half. I release and it goes from circular to flat. I've got a box of uh, these little screws and it taps itself essentially because it's plastic. I'm actually not going to include the bolts because it seems to be pretty well screwed in there. Um, those were using a three millimeter drill bit and that worked really well and however the wire, the coax wire has to go through the middle. What will be happening is the wires, I've drilled one hole in the middle here but the wire, the main wire for each 
um, pair of conductors here will be going through that hole and one of them, the positive, we connect it to one, the negative, we connect it to the other and then it will be stuck, those little caps will be stuck on the end of these square shaped looking tubes. What I've decided is my joining system in the middle here is I've got these 90 degree brackets which I have left over from something else and I don't need them anymore. However, and I do also have these um, long bolts here and the idea was that these were meant to thread through both pieces one, two, three, four and join them in the middle. However, that's not going to work because these aren't long enough so I'm using these brackets and the holes in the brackets are too small so the bolts don't actually go through them but they do thread through them which is a unintended coincidence so what I've decided is that uh, I'll be doing is I'll have a 90 degree bracket there the bolt will go through the middle piece a second bolt will be on the other side and I'll have one on that side and one below like that which connects underneath. I'll put two next to each other. Is that going to work? Mm, I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, I'll just do one. I'll just do that. I'm just going to mark wherever the 50 centimeters is. And then because these are 30 mil wide, I'm just going to mark um, 15 millimeters on each side. And I'll just do a dot there, and then one there. There you go. Now I know where to drill. I just realized that on the bottom here, I've got a 90 degree bracket. I don't actually need that because this is all I've got. So I don't know why I put that 90 degree bracket on the bottom. However, I just remembered also, I have to secure this to a pole. So I've got these two hose clamps. So um, I'm gonna try to somehow make something out of that so I can secure it to a pole. It seems to be extremely rigid. And I did run into some problems because the bottom pieces there, two there, um, I gotta somehow make it so that I can use hose clamps and attach it to a pole using those 90 degree brackets, which I accidentally left in there, but I decided to keep them because I need them anyway. Here are my ideas for mounting it to the pole. The brackets would just go on the bottom here, and if you pretend this is upside down, uh, the brackets will, the pole will just sort of slot in between the brackets, and then in between the brackets here, be the pole that's sticking up like that sort of and then between them will be the hose clamps which will tighten it and hopefully grab onto the pole if you have the pole like this you'll have the antenna sort of fixed on like that at the top and I'd somehow fit two hose clamps down there now my other idea was to take the two extrusions and draw some holes into them and then so two holes in the bottom one, two holes in the top one, and then I'll hose clamp the pole between the uh, crossover point at one of the, um, on just one side. So like wherever they cross over like that, the pole, which will be my finger, will just be like in that little corner. This idea might work, but I don't think it would be a very good idea because it, like with the wind blows, the thing's just going to fly off and turn into a frisbee. Whereas this one, hopefully it'll actually be gripped on. But with this one, if I, type, if I make it too tight, then instead of being laying down flat like that on the pole, if I make it too tight or if the holes aren't drilled perfectly, then it may tilt and that would ruin the effectiveness of the antenna. I think I'll go with the idea with the drilling the holes. The hose clamps that I'm using uh, go between 33 and 57 millimeters so in the middle is roughly 45 millimeters so what I've done is I've set my caliper to 45 millimeters and I'm just going to scratch into the aluminum pieces roughly 45 that way 45 that way and wherever the two scratch marks are that's where I'll drill and then hopefully the hose clamp can fit between them and the pole will probably go in. 
Using the 45mm spacing for the two holes, I marked those and then drilled those with a 7mm drill bit. Once I drilled that out, I used a triangle file to try to get uh, more space in the holes. And then I used a combination of uh, flat files and the triangle file, uh, file to fit the hose clamp in. I took the cable off the old antenna where I've got the angle bracket and also the wires and what I'll be doing is I'll be bolting this bracket here onto the antenna so it has the port at the bottom and then I'll be using the old wires I'll be drilling a hole in here and on the bottom and I'll be routing the wires through the tubing through the holes that I've drilled on the end and then I'll be soldering the connectors which I've just trimmed off I'll be soldering those to these little uh, little crimp connectors things. I'm not sure what they're called, but I just have them lying around. So I'll be using those to secure it, all the um, electrical part together. Here I've got the first cable and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be poking it through the little hole I drilled here and I will just simply be feeding it through. I then grab this piece. I feed those through the hole. Once I get my um, element piece, I will grab the two wires and you can see there's the hole there. I'll then feed it through the hole and once I feed it through the hole, I'll then attach those little connector thingies. I drilled the holes at the top and on the other side. I then took the wire, threaded it through all four ends and I put the t I hammered this piece on so now the wires are sticking through that hole. So on the ends of the wire, I've put the crimpy plugs where you screw into it, and this seems to be pretty secure. And I also tested the continuity, and there's no shorts. So this is the existing antenna, and this was put up when the house was built, but it doesn't really work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it down, probably around that area there, and we'll put up the antenna that we made in its place. So here I've taken the antenna pole down, it's no longer on the roof, and I've got the antenna right there. The old antenna itself is extremely rusty, um, this part here just literally broke off, I just bashed it with a hammer and it just fell off, and then over here we've got some those clamps and those are all very worn but the pole itself seems very solid and the part of the antenna I was going to mount it to is this part here. The full antenna has been mounted to the wall in place of the original one all the way up there and I oriented, orientated it so it's facing north and there's the antenna cable ready to hook up to the computer. Here I've got the window set up and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up the SDR Sharp software and I've already got it selected on the NOAA satellite. You can see the signals coming in because if we look at the pass, it's pretty much overhead. There we go, we'll just let the image collect slowly and uh, we'll see the result. And it's building the image. I should point out the the diagonal part of that um, is because of the sample rate that I'm doing it for. If I change the sample rate to much different, it fixes it. You can see the um, the east coast of Australia where I am here. That's pretty good, I think. I uh, wasn't intending for this particular capture to be perfect, I just need to make sure it works. And the setup I have is quite well, although I'm hoping to uh, I'm hoping to move it out of the bathroom for now and put it into a more permanent location. So, um, maybe I'll post an update once this is all finalised, I don't know. But if you're interested in these types of videos, do let me know and I'll be encouraged to make some more. Thank you for watching.